Um, sorry about that. Uh, I have a bit of a headache. Welcome to my uh, first in a long-running series, I hope, of Final Fantasy games. Um, right now I'm here to talk to you about um, oh, Final Fantasy VII. You see, Final Fantasy VII is actually a pretty good game, especially for its time, but I'm going to tear it a new asshole anyway. Why? Well, for one, I enjoy pissing creepy fanboys off, but there are a lot of legitimate reasons to hate Final Fantasy VII. Not necessarily for what it is, but what it did to gaming culture at large. Final Fantasy VII marked a major turning point in gaming in a lot of ways. It was one of the landmark titles that, along with Metal Gear Solid, really put the new PlayStation console on the map, showcasing features and technology that gamers had never seen before, like full motion video seamlessly integrated into gameplay, colorful art, impressive 3D graphics. From a technical standpoint, it really raised the bar. Even today, when Sony was looking for something to showcase the power of the PlayStation 3 and get people fired up about what it could do, what did they do? Other than lie about their tech demos being pre rendered, of course, they remade the opening cinematic from Final Fantasy 7. And that just prompted all the fans to ask whether they'd remake the whole game for the PS3. People loved it that much. It was new and it was fresh in almost every respect. It had a futuristic setting, and it made revisions to the combat and magic system that shifted the whole paradigm. It changed everything. So what's the problem? It changed everything. Welcome to the death of the old school Final Fantasy gamer. I won't lie and say that the older games were flawless. Most of the time they just involved you gathering a bunch of people with shady backgrounds to go collect magic crystals or dragon balls or whatever before the big bad collected them all, and then the world explodes and then you go collect more crystals. Seriously, try naming a Final Fantasy game that didn't revolve almost entirely around collecting magic rocks. Gaming was never this good again, though, almost like a golden age had ended, when the game started really being about hammy scripts, soap opera dialogue, brooding characters, unnecessary side quests, and pointless, annoying minigames. There was purity in their simplicity. Of course, evolution was inevitable. I can't grudge the game for changing with the times, and I don't necessarily hate Final Fantasy VII. I just hate the people who obsess over it. Before with Final Fantasy, it was gamers only. Then when 7 came out, all of a sudden the game became something else. It started attracting a new kind of fan. Really, really creepy anime freaks. All of a sudden, liking Final Fantasy put otherwise respectable gamers on the same bandwagon as people who feel compelled to dress like idiots and who think Neon Genesis Evangelion was really deep. I'm sorry, I just never understood cosplay. These costumes were never meant to be seen in actual three dimensions, and nobody in the history of ever has looked cool carrying a six-foot foam buster sword. It's just childish. But I'm not just picking on cosplayers. Honestly, you guys kind of weird me out. But hey, it's your money. After all, we let Trekkies get away with it. It's just that anime does weird things to people sometimes, you know? You could pervert anything, I suppose, but otaku are capable of some weird shit. You want to see what I mean? Go to Google Image Search and just type in Tifa or Selfie or any other woman in the Final Fantasy universe and see what you get with the safety filters off. I can't even show you 90% of this shit. Most of these pictures of Tifa seem to be under the impression that her boobs are roughly the size of giant pumpkins with foot-long nipples that stick out like ICBMs. Here's some from the next game. I know these aren't from Seven, but believe me, you can find stuff just like it for that one, too. What the hell is Selfie doing with her nunchucks? Uh, this must be from Bandcamp. Oh, this is the tame stuff. I even found one of a lactating hermaphroditic Quistus tit-fucking herself and blowing her own three-foot cock while choking it with her whip, sticking the handle in her pussy, and jamming a vibrator in her own asshole. Talk about multitasking! You know I'm boring when the most creative I ever get is using my left hand. This isn't even physically possible! Her dick would drag the ground! No amount of duct tape could conceal this! That's not even getting into the orgy porn, the tentacle porn, rape porn, underage character porn, and the gigabytes of over 10,000 nasty fanfiction you can find with a simple search. I never considered myself that much of a prude, but whoa! Boobs do not work this way! They should not account for 60% of a woman's mass. I mean, I know all anime fans aren't like this, but where are your standards, man? You guys gotta monitor your own people. I mean, this is the legacy of Final Fantasy VII. 
bad movies, air gays, and really weird porn. Did you see Advent Children? Was that piece of shit supposed to make any sense at all? I could do an entire review on why that movie sucked all by itself, and that's not even getting to the other movie, The Spirits Within. A movie so bad it sank the entire production company, probably because it had nothing whatsoever to do with any aspect of the game. Talk about a bait and switch. Advent Children was loud, dumb, and obnoxious, but at least it was modeled after the game. I don't know which is worse, the official movies or the fan-made porn. At least with the porn, you spend ten minutes or so, jerk off and you're done and you got something out of it. I feel sorrier for the sad saps who rushed out to get a first-run copy of Advent Children on UMD. Yeah, that's a format that'll last. I just got three words for you poor bastards who bought a PSP. Second analog stick. Enjoy your bad camera controls and rearview mirror on Gran Turismo, cocksuckers. Anyway, I guess this all comes across as a bit of a rant. After all, this is like saying I don't like cats and owls because people are putting lolcats pictures all over the place, or denouncing Bill Cosby because Carlos Mencia steals all his jokes. But alright, I guess I ought to at least explain how the game sucks. People always compliment the plot, but it really boils down to an angsty, long-haired emo punk tart with a seven-foot sword and an Oedipus complex, wanting to drop a big fucking meteor on the planet for no real reason. Of course, to do this, he has to collect a bunch of magic rocks, and only a group of terrorists rebelling against the oppressive Shinra Corporation, known as Avalanche, can stop him. I don't think anyone really knows what Avalanche stands for, but I think that's just the long name for the A-Team, because it's led by some guy named Barrett, a foul-mouthed black dude played by Mr. T, who decides the best way to earn equal rights for the working man is to hire mercenaries to blow up the city's power plants, causing untold ecological damage in the process. Hey, remember, kids, good guys destroy a city's vital infrastructure. Hospital lose power, police can't dispatch to emergency calls, people go without heat. Truly, these men are heroes to the Republic. One of these mercenaries is another spiky-haired brooding Nancy boy named Cloud Strife, yeah, that's her real name, who also compensates for his small dick by toting a ridiculously huge sword that weighs more than he does. Of course, this is the future, so almost everyone decides to brawl it out with melee weapons instead of carrying firearms. Only Barrett seems to have the right idea by strapping a cybernetic cannon to his arm. A pity to the foo who gets in his way. Hey, you really have to admire the balls on Tifa, who's willing to fist fight anything and everything, including robots the size of semi-trucks. The out-of-combat graphics are pretty funny, too. Apparently, Cloud has little pipe cleaner arms, but biceps and forearms the size of basketballs. He's got the physique of Popeye the Sailor Man. I also can't say I really understand some of the characters in this game, either. For instance, there's Vincent Valentine, who I think is a vampire despite the fact I can never remember him drinking any blood, and he got his own horrible spin-off game called Dirge of Cerberus. Then there's some kind of sentient dog creature, and dumbest of all is Kate Sith, a secret double agent who works for Shinra. He infiltrates the group by employing a robotic cat with a Scottish accent who rides on the back of another huge robotic moogle like Master Blaster from Beyond Thunderdome. And seriously, this is the guy's plan. He's going to trick them into allowing a robot fortune-telling cat with a megaphone to be a part of their group. And it works. The one that always chat my asshole was Yuffie, the resident Lolita character present solely for a little underage fan service with a little lemon twist. And get this, she's supposed to be a ninja. Let me tell you something, okay? This is a ninja. This is a ninja. Even this is a ninja. This... This is not a ninja, and while we're at it, neither is this. I get it! I get it! Believe it! I'm a ninja! 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 Seriously, folks, what the fuck? You should be ashamed of yourself. I think what really attracted the perverts to this one was the relatively new concept that you could settle on one of the many, many trashy chicks as your girlfriend. Although, no matter who you chose, Cloud basically settled on Eris. You get to know her for about two hours before Sephiroth stabs her in the heart. Hey, come on, man. Hit her with a phoenix down. She'll get better. Seriously, I knew grown men who admitted to weeping openly at that scene. A bunch of pussies.
tell you where all this madness started. I just figured it out. There's one really cracked out scene in this game where you spend the better part of an hour trying to rescue one of your friends from a pimp lord named Don Corneo, a tubby crime boss who routinely selects one foxy woman per night to be his, uh, special friend. And women line up for this. Even weirder is that everyone decides it'd be a really great idea if Cloud dresses in drag and volunteers for a night of sex with this man. And he agrees. You then proceed to wander around town collecting the best clothes you can find for the job, like makeup, perfume, frilly lingerie, stuff from a vending machine, and a sexy dress. Not only that, while wandering around Don Corneo's club, you become cornered by a pack of large, muscular, oiled gay wrestlers with porn mustaches who drag you into a hot tub for a massage. Oh, by looking at this, the only way I think you can interpret this scene is that Cloud is getting systematically gangbanged by every one of these men. They are literally pulling a train on him. Oh, man! Were parents warned about this game? Anyway, you may not be surprised to learn that the already androgynous Cloud makes a pretty sexy chick, and if you're disturbed enough to have tracked down all the best items, you win. If you call this winning. Oh, 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 this is sick. What kind of perverted game is this? I can't think of anything more confusing and emotionally scarring to a kid. What can I do for you? <laughs>